Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to model a very simple ring in Blender. This one is a very beginner friendly tutorial. I'm going to be taking you through each step. We're not going to be using any sort of external tools or anything like that. So it's something you can just jump right into Blender and follow along. Very simple. And I will be uploading um, this model to my, blend, my Patreon as well. So you can check that out in the description. But that's enough said. Let's jump in, have some fun and see what we can make. Okay, so go ahead, open up a new scene in Blender. And before we get started, we're gonna make sure we have one built-in add-on enabled. So you're gonna to go to edit, go over to your preferences and under the add-ons, just up here, come to your search bar and type in extra. And you should have an option called add mesh extra objects. You're gonna go ahead, click on that to enable it and you're gonna close your preferences. Now, if you select all the default objects, just delete them and then go shift A and go to your mesh options. And if you go now down, you're gonna see this extras option for diamonds. And let's just go ahead and grab a gem because it looks better than the diamond option I have. So now we have this gem over here. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view by hitting one on our number pad. And we're gonna go shift A and we're gonna add in a UV sphere. Now we don't wanna move this in object mode. We're gonna tab into edit mode because we want our origin point to stay in the middle. And we're gonna go S, we're gonna scale this down and we're gonna go G, X and move it along the X to the side. Now you can still scale it, but we wanna go about this much. And what we wanna do now is we wanna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cube. We're gonna scale that cube down. We're gonna go G and move it over here. And let's scale it up about this much, just so it's a bit bigger than that sphere over here. And we're gonna go R to rotate it. And uh, let's just actually go to our face select option and select this face over here. Let's delete that face and the same with this one down here. Let's go to our vertex select option and in our front orthographic, we're gonna, we're gonna select these four verts over here. And we're gonna go G and move them, rotate them. E to extrude, R to rotate. And we're just gonna go along the profile of our diamond here. And we're gonna go to about here with the extrusions. And that's all we're gonna do for now. We're gonna tab back into object mode. And we now have our origin point in the center there of our world, which is what we want. So we're now gonna to go to our modifiers. We're gonna give this a array modifier. Let's come to the factor here and set that to zero because we don't wanna work along the axes here. We wanna actually spin this around our object. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna to go to our empty options, add in an empty. And then we'll use that as our pivot object. So let's select our part over here again and under the array let's enable object offset and under the drop down let's select that eyedropper and select the empty. If you now select the empty and you go R Z 90 and press enter you're gonna see it's now rotated it on the axis here. So we select our object with the array we can come here now to the count and increase it to four we now have four of these being arrayed. Now, if you scale this in object mode, this is what's gonna happen. So make sure to go Control A and apply the scale if you ever did that. But if you've done everything correctly in your front orthographic view, you should be able to tab into edit mode. And now you can make any corrections here and it'll update on these other four as well. So let's select these two verts here at the back. Let's go G and move them up a bit. And uh, let's get our proportional editing and let's select this top vertex here. Let's just go G and flatten it a little bit. So we're rolling our middle mouse button to flatten the fall off. And let's select these verts here and let's just bring them in a little bit to kind of hook around like that. And uh, let's just go to our side view here. And let's just select these verts and go S, Y and flatten them on a Y, but let's turn off proportional editing. So just bringing them in like that. And then E to extrude them, S to scale. We just want them tucked in just like that. And we're gonna tab back out and let's go and give this a subdivision surface modifier. And um, let's bump that up to two. You can tab into edit mode and you can go control R and just add in a loop here and just roll it two times. And you go S, Y and scale it along the Y. And uh, you can come over here. In fact, let's just tab out and let's just hide our gem by pressing H. And back in edit mode, go control R, add in a cut here, and then go alt S and scale it in along the normals, like so. And then tab back out, right click, go shade smooth, and then go alt H to bring our gem back in. So you can see we have this part done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, 
Let's add in a circle. Let's go G, Z and bring that circle down about this much. S to scale and then tab into edit mode. E to extrude and Z and extrude that down like this and then S to scale. Control R, add in a loop here, left click and then S to scale it out. And you can maybe scale this one out a bit as well. And then press A to select everything, E to extrude and then right click, Alt S and scale in along the normal. So we're just extruding it in like that to give it a bit of thickness. So remember, if you ever extrude, just go Alt S and you can scale it along the normals. Very handy a little trick there. So let's now give that a subdivision surface modifier. And now we have that part. At any time you can go in there and just scale that if you need to. You can also use a solidify modifier, but I just prefer to do it like this because it's just, you know, that's all we really need. Um, for now, let's just leave it like that. Let's just select all of this and go G, Z and move it up a little bit. And we're now going to go Shift A, we're going to go to our mesh options, add in a circle. Then we're going to go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. Tab into edit mode and um, let's scale this up. Okay, so we want it to be about this big. So if we tab back into object mode and go Shift A, add in a cube, you can see the circle's about that big relative to the cube. Okay, so we're going to scale that up maybe a bit more. Let's go E to extrude, S to scale, about this much. And we're going to go G, Z, and just move it up a little bit, like that. We're then going to select this middle two verts. And now we're going to go A to select everything, E to extrude a little bit. And then we're going to go to our right orthographic view. And we're going to select all of this by pressing A. And let's just bring it over on the Y axis, just so it's in the middle a little bit more. Once again, we're in our right orthographic view. We're then going to select these bottom verts, enable proportional editing, S, Y, and scale it along the Y, but now you're going to roll the proportional fall off of your mouse to decrease or increase the fall off. We're going to go about that much. Now the bottom of the ring has a bit more thickness. We're going to tab back out. Let's just delete that cube for now. And this should be more or less what we have. Now it may, might be a little bit too thick here at the bottom. So all you can do is just press C and then you can just get the selection tool and just select these bits like so and go G, Z and just bring them down a little bit. You can also um, select half of this and just delete it in the front view and then just give it a mirror modifier and enable clipping. So now if we make any changes, it'll kind of mirror, which is kind of what we want. So this is what we have so far. Let's just also give it a subdivision surface modifier and um, let's tab back in and let's just come in here and go shift alt and just click on these two edges while we're holding in shift and alt and let's just go control b and let's just give that a bevel just to sharpen that up a bit control r add a loop here in the middle left click twice and then alt s just to scale it in a bit and that's looking a lot better we can also just in edit mode just delete this face on the end open that up a bit, tab back out, and now we have this ring. We can right click and go shade smooth. And now let's just um, bring the whole thing up, like so. And let's just select our ring, all the ring bits, and go G, Z, and bring them up to about here. And then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder, and we can go G, Z, bring it up, S to scale it down a bit, and then S, Z, and let's just flatten that bring it up a bit more, just like that. And then you can tab into edit mode and go to face select and select this face here, E to extrude S to scale, and then E to extrude that down. So this is kind of like the shape we have. We're also gonna select this bottom face and go control B and make a bevel, like so. And let's just select this edge here and go control B and make a bevel. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. We can also give that a subdivision surface modifier. So now all these parts are kind of coming together and this is now our ring. So feel free to apply all these modifiers and join things together. But for now, what I'm gonna do is maybe just bring my gem down just a little bit and maybe just tighten things in here just a little bit here because these are the little prongs that hold it all together. 
Okay, that looks better. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in an empty. I'm gonna go with a cube. Then we're gonna go Control I to inverse the selection. So everything else is active. And then holding in Control, you're gonna select that empty. Control P and go Object, Keep Transform. So now we can select this one empty and we can scale it and everything goes along. So I'm gonna go S.1 and hit Enter. So we scaled it down 10 times. And we can now go Shift A, add in a plane. And let's just go tab into edit mode and grab this edge here and go E and extrude it up. And we can also select this edge and go Control B to create a bevel and roll the middle mouse button to add in segments. So now we have a backdrop. We're gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. And you can now go and add in a camera of your choice. I'm just gonna add in just a camera I'm gonna kind of rotate it down a bit. And under my output settings, I'm gonna make it 1080 by 1080. And also gonna to go to my camera settings and make the focal length 95. And just move my camera out a bit. And it's up to you to determine how you wanna place your camera. So at this point, um, completely your choice. I like to kind of look from above like this, kind of mainly focusing on that um, gem but this is completely your choice, how you wanna approach this. Um, you can go Control B and just make a render box around a camera when you're in camera view. And then you can now go to your render settings and change it to cycles. Change the device to GPU if you have one. And then go to the max samples. Let's go with 120 because we have to denoise or enabled anyway. And make sure to save. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And uh, if we now go Z and we go rendered, this is what we have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my world properties. I'm gonna go to color and let's just change that to sky texture. Let's just come here to the strength and make it 0.3 or 0.5. And now let's go shift A, let's add in a light, add in an area light, G, Z, bring it up. And um, let's go to the strength here under our light and make it 90. I'm gonna bring it up even higher. Um, to see this better, let's select our floor. Let's just go to our materials, give that a new material, and let's make it darker, like so. And this is also go to the roughness and bring it down to make it more reflective, maybe even a little bit darker. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our shading workspace, make sure we're in the camera view, make sure we're rendered, and now we're gonna work on our ring materials. So let's select the actual gem itself and go new. Let's just call it gem. And uh, let's go shift A, search and get a glass BSDF and let's plug it into the surface. And let's make it whatever color. You can leave it clear, but I'm gonna go with kind of like a blue. I kind of really like that sort of look. And um, if you really want to see it well, you gotta kind of rotate your light a little bit till you kind of catch that diamond. And you can always duplicate your light as well. Maybe I'll go to my world environment and just bring that strength down to 0.1, so it's a bit darker. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with something like that. And then what you're gonna do is, once you have your gem, you're gonna select the actual ring, go new, and this one's really simple. All we wanna do is make kind of like a gold looking color, increase it to metallic, and then bring that roughness way down to make it reflective. Um, I wouldn't recommend going all the way down. I think a little bit of um, roughness is kind of good. Now we have a gold material, I'm gonna call it gold. And then we're gonna select all of these prongs, all these extra little bits. And we're gonna hold in shift and select a ring, go control L, and then go link materials. Now all of those have that same material. And you can see this is what it looks like. Um, feel free to tweak the settings here and you can zoom in your camera a little bit closer if you need to. Also select the world, um, the actual floor. Make that much darker. I think that looks a bit better. And then what you can do is you can maybe just make sure you have a light source coming a bit more from the front. 
by duplicating one of your lights and just rotating it in. You should really want to catch that light. And once you have that, you can actually select your camera and under your camera settings, enable depth of field and then just select the eyedropper and select that gem and then bring this f-stop value down. So now it's going to be kind of out of focus, but it'll be focusing on that gem. So if you now were to save this, render and go render image, you should see that this looks quite nice. So let's see what this looks like. And there we have it. So the materials here are really basic. Um, you guys can definitely work on this, add some roughness or some bump to it. That can really help. Um, but I'll quickly show you my original here. This is my original one I made, exact same principle. I made the gem a little bit smaller here. But all I did here is um, I messed around with my lighting a bit more. And under my material, I just added a noise texture into the bump. So to give it a little bit of displacement. But other than that, it really just is the same thing. So I'll be uploading this file anyway to my Patreon. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I might actually just end up selecting all of these things here at the top and just scaling it a little bit because I feel like it might be just a bit too big. Yeah, other than that, I think this has been a really fun tutorial and I'll see you guys next time.